I made this slideshow about Cambodia because I wanted to tell as many people as possible about this beautiful country and its people and about their desperate need for help. There are no accurate statistics, but the numbers in this slideshow are as close as to the truth as is possible. I knew Cambodia was a beautiful country with the incredible World Heritage Site of Angkor. The Ta Prom Temple in Angkor is where trees and temple intertwine almost symbiotically, one supporting the other. Buddhist Bayon Temple is perhaps the most striking, with the huge faces smiling in an enigmatic way, as if they hold the secrets of the past. Within this temple is the remarkable bas relief, as detailed as it was when it was first sculpted. It tells the story of daily life a thousand years ago. I knew that the royal palace and silver pagoda within its ground would be magnificent, though the opulence within the pagoda stood out in sharp contrast to the poverty that surrounds it. But I didn't know, and I was deeply shocked by my ignorance that between 1975 and 1978, during Pol Pot's reign of terror, that 1,700,000 innocent people were shot or battered to death. This was a quarter of the whole population in a country only twice the size of Scotland. In addition, one million people died of starvation, forced labour, landmines, bombing and disease. In 1978, the Vietnamese army discovered the S-21 prison in Phnom Penh. It's estimated that this prison alone held up to 1,500 prisoners at any one time, and up to 20,000 in total between the years 1975 and 1978. And of this number, only 14 survived. When the soldiers entered the prison, they found bodies shackled to beds with implements of torture discarded next to them. They found rows of shackles where hundreds of people have been shackled together in the searing tropical heat. They found prison cells 80 centimetres by 2 metres. They found a hanging post and pots where people were hung upside down with their heads in water to extract a confession. They found 10 prison regulations. The English translation is a bit confusing, but the message is still very, very clear. I'll read you four. While getting lashes or electrification, do not cry out. Do nothing. Sit still and wait for my orders. If no order, keep quiet. When I ask you to do something, you must do it without protesting. If you don't follow the above rules, you shall get many lashes of the electric wire. If you disobey any point of my regulations, you shall either get ten lashes or five shocks of electric discharge. The Vietnamese soldiers found thousands of photographs of men, women and children, identified by a number. Those without shirts had the number pinned on their skin. From S21, the people were taken to the killing fields. They were shackled and blindfolded and forced to sit round a pit where they were bludgeoned to death. In the killing fields, a pit was discovered with hundreds of infants' bones, but no complete skulls. The answer was on a nearby tree, where they found brain tissue. We saw one prison and one killing field. 17,000 people were murdered in this one killing field, and they're still discovering more pits and more bones here. It is estimated that in Cambodia, there were 158 prisons, 309 mass grave sites, and 1,900 grave pits. We met a survivor from the S21 prison 
He was an artist who has recorded in detail the treatment in the prison. His wife was killed, but where she is buried he doesn't know. We brought a book with another survivor's account of the evacuation from Phnom Penh, where he describes the road he had to travel on as being littered with corpses. He described the treatment in the S21 prison that he was tortured for 12 days and 12 nights and only survived because he was a mechanic and useful to the Khmer Rouge. What is surprising is that the Cambodians show no signs of bitterness for these unprecedented atrocities, just bewilderment as to why the perpetrators are still living unpunished among them. Only one Dutch has been imprisoned. Unfortunately, investigations and trials will be hampered by lack of funds. Everybody has lost members of their family during these three years. This all happened 30 years ago, but the country and its people are still suffering very badly from the legacy left from Pol Pot's regime. The successive mismanagement of governments and the lack of communication with the rest of the world mean that many people are unaware of the current situation in Cambodia. There is great poverty. There is no access to health care for the majority. People who get seriously ill just die. There are few mechanical aids for those who have disability or have lost limbs through the landmines. There is a high level of trafficking and sexual abuse, far worse than it is in their more famous neighbouring countries. There is no effective public transport system. People commute standing with not an inch to spare in what can only be described as cattle trucks. Roads are poor outside the city centres, so people travel through dust clouds going about their daily tasks. The Cambodians are lovely people. Except for a small minority, the Cambodians are resourceful and work hard to make enough money to put rice in their bowls. Even the poorest don't just beg, but are always something to sell. An umbrella and some boxes with water bottles filled with fuel act as a local petrol station where the tuk-tuk driver fills up. Motorbikes rarely carry a single person. More often they have a group of friends or a family on them. Mother, father and two children all astride. They are the main form of transport carrying just about anything. People, bananas and sometimes even pigs. Cambodia does receive world aid, but has built up an enormous debt. Their main benefactors are China. Doctors come for short stays to operate on the most needy in outreach centres. There is a little army of volunteers who try and educate and improve the lives of the poorest. But this is just a drop in the ocean. The Australians are rebuilding the railway, but this will not be completed until 2015. Until then, most Cambodians use a single gauge line railway and a bamboo train. This Cambodian baby is less than a month old. He was born this October. Let's give him a future. Give him a country where there is free speech. Give him affordable education and health care. Give him a land where he can run freely without fear of landmines. Give him a childhood where he has enough food and he can play. Give him a safe environment where he won't be exploited in any way. You can help if you want to by sharing this with all your friends, by visiting Cambodia. It's a truly beautiful country and has the most charming people who could give us in the West some lessons in hospitality. And as well, it has delicious but very cheap food. And if you want to support a charity, of course that would help. There are several charities working hard in Cambodia. The Somali Man Foundation and the Mercy Teams, both working to eradicate trafficking and sexual abuse. The Cambodia Trust provides mechanical aids to landmine victims and those with severe disability. Thank you for watching this slideshow. 
Cambodia moved me so much that I wanted all my friends and their friends to know how much these lovely people have suffered. Please help them.